Hi, everybody. Uh, we'll get started, just so I know most of you have made time either at the beginning of your day on the West Coast or with your lunch break if you're located on the East Coast like me. Uh, so my name is Adam Lombardi. I am the Director of Sales and Business Development here at Amazing Charts. I'm going to be taking you through just a quick intro uh, on this webinar, and I'm going to be passing off to Katie Faywin, who is our practice management trainer. She'll be able to walk through many of the functions, the benefits, and uh, some screen sharing on a short demonstration of how it would look and where you'd be working within the system. So as far as the history of practice management here at Amazing Charts, uh, for years it was something that our clients were looking for a solution to handle their own billing in-house. Amazing Charts started as an electronic health record system and focused purely on the clinical side for several years. That focus obviously allowed us to move up the ranks to be one of the top ranked EHRs on the market year after year. Um, in the past, what we offered was an HL7 interface which could connect Amazing Charts to any practice management of your choice. This seemed to be a solution that got people the results that they needed. They were able to use a practice management and use the top rated EHR. What we learned over time is that that interface is not as seamless as most people would hope. And there's a lot of double entry when you're using two platforms, as well as having to open up two separate softwares, sign on, log in, et cetera. So it could get confusing at times using two platforms at once. So Amazing Charts put some time and money into developing a seamless practice management that would allow single sign-on and would actually be integrated with your Amazing Charts EHR. So when we looked at now how do we go to market and set up pricing, Amazing Charts obviously is one of the lowest priced EHR solutions on the market and we needed to keep our practice management in line with that. We couldn't offer you know, EHR at, at a discounted price and then have a practice management that would price us out of the market. So we looked around at all of the top competitors in the practice management marketplace and purposely set our price below that. So we are proud to say that we know that we're offering a rock bottom pricing model on both the practice management and the electronic health record systems. Similar to Amazing Charts, the practice management pricing is based on the number of providers in your practice. And just to go over quickly how that pricing works, the first provider, it would be $249 a month, and then it's discounted as you go forward. If you add a second provider, it's not double, it's only $198 for the second provider. And then if you do have three or more providers, it's $99 for provider number three, and so on. Uh, monthly. So we continue to discount it to try and encourage larger groups to take on the practice management as a solution for them. And then as far as who should use Amazing Charts practice management, this is something I want to spend a couple of minutes on making sure everybody understands that Amazing Charts practice management is a software. It's not a service. So you need somebody that works in your office that understands billing, understands coding, and can do that work efficiently for you. I understand that as a provider, most of you would be living in the clinical side, but as a business owner, all of your revenue comes through the practice management side. So you want to make sure that you do have a staff member that understands what they're doing, and then it should be pretty intuitive for them to just hop in and use our software. If you don't have somebody that understands billing very well, I would recommend that you look more into something like our revenue cycle management service, which is us providing that billing service for you along with software. If you have somebody in your house, in your office that can do it, it'll obviously cut your costs quite a bit because you're already paying the staff member for work there. And then if at the end any of you would like a deeper dive, a one-on-one -on -one demonstration, if you reach out to our sales at amazingcharts.com or you can call our toll-free line, Katie will show a slide, we can arrange a one-on-one -on -one demo for you and any other staff members at your practice. And then here are some of the things that are included with Amazing Charts that are going to be benefits for you. Uh, the first one is the eligibility checking, which is huge, we found, with a lot of our clients. This gives you real-time ability to check somebody's insurance when they're coming into your office. I'm sure we've all had people hand over an insurance card that's no longer active. 
now you're spending time trying to chase that patient down for that encounter payment, which we all know is very difficult. Um, the customizable schedule, this was based on requests that we had over the history with Amazing Charts to try and customize the schedule with colors, time increments, things like that. So what people are able to do is they can list providers in different colors. So at a quick glance, you can look at the schedule and say, oh, that one's here for Dr. Smith. Or they can color coordinate it based on the stage that the patient is in. For example, they could put red that they're in the waiting room, green that they're in the exam room, yellow they're at checkout. Uh, the data integration, this is what I touched on a little bit earlier, having the ability to not have to make double entry changes. When you're using an interface practice management, something as simple as your patient, Donna Smith, moves and changes her address, you'd actually have to go into two softwares and make that change in the demographics for it to pick up. In the Amazing Charts Practice Management, if you make a change in ACPM, that change is also reflected, obviously, on the clinical side and vice versa. So it will reduce double entry and quite a bit of frustration in your office. The Clearinghouse integration, uh, the clearinghouse that we use is Claim Remedy, and they are one of the top-rated clearinghouses on the market. And that will allow all of your claims to move electronically to the payers and money to come back to you and you have access to their portal where you'll actually be able to see what's going on with your claims and have more visibility into what happens behind the scenes. And here's some testimonials rather than read these to you. There's, like I said, we're going to forward a copy of this webinar to you. You can read those. There'll be a link that you can click on to get a few more case studies as well. And with that, I'm going to pass it along to Katie. Katie should be able to show us a more detailed dive and a high-level view of Amazing Charts Practice Management. Thank you, Adam. So welcome, everyone. Thank you for your time today. I'm going to spend probably in the next uh, 30 minutes or so going over some of the key features and workflow of ACPM. There will be time at the end to go over any questions. If you would like to send questions to me throughout the demonstration, there is a chat area of the participant panel and also a questions area. So if you want to send your questions to me, um, because everyone will remain muted for the entirety of the presentation. And then, as Adam noted, if you are interested in getting a more deep dive or custom demo, there will be contact information on a slide at the end so that you can reach out to us at your convenience and we can schedule that for you with our demo specialist. So everyone should be able to see my screen now. I am going to start today in Amazing Charts so that you can all see how you will navigate between the two systems, if you were to come on board with us. Everyone is probably already familiar with Amazing Charts. You may or may not be using Amazing Charts for patient registration and scheduling. If you do currently use it during uh, the onboarding process, we are able to bring all of your current patient demographics and scheduling information over to the practice management, so you won't have to worry about doing any kind of manual entry or converting of that data uh, when you come on uh, practice management. When you log into Amazing Charts, you'll see certain links throughout the Amazing Charts program that would allow you to launch the practice management. So you can see here along the top, I have an ACPM button. If I was to click on that, it's going to now immediately open up the main screen of practice management, which is the front desk screen. So you'll notice that practice management is broken down by all of the typical roles in a practice. So you'll see over here on the left-hand side, this is our view navigator area, so you'll always know where you're working in the program. Because over here on the left, it will highlight for you what screen you're currently working in. 
So it's very convenient for the staff to always know where they are in the program and what they're doing in the program because the system will highlight it for you over on the left. The first area of practice management is the front desk. This is where all of the front desk activities take place. So a front desk staff would not even need to go to any of the other areas of the program potentially to complete all of the necessary tasks they need to get done on a given day. You'll see blue links throughout the entire program, which are hyperlinks. So from here, I could easily launch my appointment book screen. And this is one of the key features that Adam had referenced early, earlier. Excuse me. Uh, you can color code a lot of different facets of the schedule and practice management. You'll see here, you can color code the provider's headers and any other resources that you book appointments for. You can color code availability slots and also slots that are unavailable for your resources. You can color code appointment types. So all your follow-ups could be one color versus your new patient appointments could be another color. You can color code check-in and check-out statuses so that everyone in your practice will know when a patient has successfully checked in for their appointment. They could turn a color versus when they have checked out for an appointment, they would turn another color. Also, a lot of practices are concerned with no-show appointments. You also would have the ability to color code patients that do not show up for their appointments. And we also mentioned the eligibility checking in Amazing Charts Practice Management. You can even color code eligibility responses. So if it's critical for your practice to know before the patient comes in for their appointment whether or not they are eligible, you could have all of your patients that came back with an eligibility response of ineligible show as a particular color. If you choose not, to use the color coding for the eligibility checking, that is fine. There will also be an icon on each one of your patient's appointment slots whether the patient's eligibility check was successful or not. There will be a check mark for eligible and an X for ineligible. You'd also have the ability to go in and get eligibility details. You could view why the patient came back ineligible. Or if the patient came back eligible and the payer responded back with benefit information and details, you'd be able to go in and get those details. Or if you had to do a recheck. You would also have the ability to go in and do an on-the-spot eligibility check. You'll also notice right here from the scheduler, I can easily launch the patient's chart. So during the check-in and check-out process, your front desk would easily be able to navigate to the patient's chart and update any necessary information during that appointment. And we always do recommend that you're always launching a patient's chart and reviewing their data with them to make sure that there is no information that needs to be updated. And here is an example of what a typical patient's chart looks like in practice management, obviously depending on how long the patient has been with your practice and what is required for that patient to be seen. Some patient's charts are going to uh, be a lot more robust than others. But the chart in practice management is really a one-stop shop for your front desk and your biller. 
they can see all in one screen patient demographic information. And if they have to go in and edit any of that information, there are links that allow you to launch the entire demographic screen in an editable format so that you can make any necessary changes. You can see all of the billing information, so who is responsible for that patient, insurance balances, patient balances. You'll be able to see the insurances that have been set up on the patient's account, along with the policy numbers and what the patient responsibility is. You can see their data service history, so all the times that they were seen in your practice and the details of those visits. Our system allows you to track patient alerts. So this could be critical for your front desk or even your back office to be aware of pertinent information about the patient. So that information can be added so that it is viewable during um, the patient's chart review. And you'll notice you can color code, italicize, bold all of these alerts. You can see upcoming and historical appointment information in the patient's chart. So you'd be able to see all the dates of services for that patient and the details. If referrals and prior authorizations are required for your practice, those can be entered and viewed from the patient's chart. They get their own section of the chart. And when you set up referrals and prior authorizations in Amazing Charts Practice Management, you have the ability to set up reminders for those in your practice. So for example, if a patient's referral was only good for a month, you could tell the system you want to be reminded maybe a week before that referral is due to expire so that it will give you enough time to request another referral for that patient. Or if there were so many visits allocated for a patient, you could have the system remind you once a certain number has been reached. So again, you can take action on that referral or prior authorization. You can see all the times that a claim was actually sent out of practice management for that patient. And again, the details, what plan it was sent for, the date it was sent, and the status of that claim. When you send statements out of Amazing Charts Practice Management, there's two ways. You can either run the statement batch, print it, and mail it yourself, or you can sign up for electronic statements with our third-party vendor, Bill Flash, and they will send statements on your behalf. Whichever way you choose, the statement history for an individual patient will reside in the patient's chart under the statement history area of the chart, where you'd always be able to go in and see the amount of a statement that was sent and pull up the details of that statement and answer any questions that the patient may have regarding that statement that they received and potentially even reprint it if necessary. And uh, there are certain areas of the statement that are customizable by practice, and that's something that your practice management implementation specialist and trainer would go over with you. You'll also notice when I uh, right-click on appointment, in addition to launching the patient's chart and also getting uh, eligibility details and checking eligibility, you can also print and counterform headers 
out of Amazing Charts Practice Management. So if you have a pre-printed encounter form, you could print uh, the patient demographic details and balance details at the top of that encounter. But we do uh, recommend that clients get away from paper encounter forms since the system does allow um, your provider to do the coding in Amazing Charts and have the details of that patient's information automatically transmit over to practice management, and we'll go over that in just a few. So encounter forms are really no longer uh, necessary from that standpoint once you come on practice management, but we keep that here just in case. You can print a patient information sheet to give to the patient upon check-in. And you can also launch the new registration screen from the front desk. So if a patient calls and is a new patient, from here you'd be able to open up our patient registration screen and fill out as much details as you would want for that patient. But we do allow for many registrations in practice management. The only three fields that are required to initially get a patient entered is name, gender, and date of birth. But we do give you the ability to put in as much information as you want initially because some practices do want to get insurance information as well so that they can get that eligibility checked before that new patient is even seen. As far as booking appointments in ACPM, there's two different options. You can either use the different navigation tools on the appointment book screen. So you can use the calendar feature over here on the right, or down at the bottom here, we have navigation buttons to allow you to go to different days. You can also do a multi-day view for your providers, so that if you wanted to look at five days at once, you can do that. Or if you'd prefer Amazing Charts to practice management to do all the work for you, you'll notice here up at the top, I have search options, and I could put in a criteria up at the top of what I am looking for in my appointment, as far as the date range, the best time of day the patient, uh, wants to be seen days a week, and the system would actually respond back with a list of availability based on the criteria that I've entered. As far as rescheduling appointments, you have two options for that as well. You can either move an appointment by click dragging and dropping the appointment to another slot on the schedule, and it will bring over all of the details of that patient's appointment, so all you'd have to do is hit save to move the patient's appointment, or you can cut and paste. And then once you find the new day and time for the appointment, you would right-click and paste it. You'll also notice when I'm working with a specific patient appointment that if I hover over the appointment, I can get some demographic details for that patient. So this is great from a standpoint of check-in or if you need to call and confirm appointments. All that information can be accessible right from the appointment. And it's up to you what information that you want to view when you hover all over an appointment. This is customizable. You'll also see down at the bottom here that you can view information for a particular patient that you have selected from the appointment scheduler. You can easily block and unblock availability from the scheduler as well. 
So you'll notice one of my providers is in surgery today. You don't have to go to a separate screen if you needed to block an appointment because the provider is not going to be there or vice versa. If the provider wasn't originally supposed to be in the office, but now they are going to be because something was you know, changed in their schedule, you can easily unblock and block availability. So there's a lot of flexibility with the program as far as the front desk goes, but you'll notice most of the tasks that a front desk would need to do is all accessible right from the front desk area. If your front desk prefers to manage appointments a little bit differently, You'll notice in the front desk area of PM, there is a manage appointments area that you could use instead of that book application that we were just on. You can still see all of the patient's information regarding their appointment information. And then there are all of these different action items uh, for each one of the patient's appointments. So from here, I can launch the patient's chart and view their details. If I needed to collect and enter a copayment at check-in and check-out, I would know what I needed to collect, and I could enter that payment right from the patient's chart under the patient payment entry link. I could go in and manage the details of the patient's appointment from here. I could check their eligibility. If their eligibility had been previously checked, I can also see the status on this screen. So you'll see that this patient came back with a status of eligible. And if I drilled into this link, I'd be able to get the details of that eligibility status. You can print the encounter form header. And then you can change the status of the patient's appointment. Mark them checked in, missed, or seen. And as you update their statuses in practice management, yep. Yep. it will be viewable for anybody that looks at that appointment, whether it be under the manage appointments or the appointment scheduling area, what that patient's new status is. You'll also see from the front desk, I could print a daily appointment list. So if you like to have a paper appointment list for all your patients that are coming in, you can do that from here. You can also use this as a no-show or cancellation list at the end of the day as well. So it serves multiple functions. You'll notice there's a patient registration link here. So if it's more convenient for the user to launch the patient registration screen from the front desk instead of the book application, they can do that. We put in a couple of the billing links under the front desk, because obviously, depending on the size of your practice, they may need to do some um, minor charge entry or payment entry. You can also manage referrals and prior authorizations here instead of the uh, individual patient's chart. This is also where you can search for patients in practice management, and we allow for uh, a number of different ways to search for patients. Once you search for the patient, you'd be able to launch their chart right from here by clicking on their name. And we also have the ability for appointment reminders. So instead of actually booking a patient's follow-up appointment or maybe yearly appointment, you can set up what we call a recall for that patient and the front desk would be able to manage those recalls right from here and contact the patient and let them know that it's time for them to make their appointment for their annual or any other tests or procedures that they may need to get done. Uh, we have the 
The next link, bookkeeping. This is where your insurance payments will be posted and managed in the practice management. So during the implementation process, you would work with a dedicated clearinghouse rep to get all of your payers set up for electronic claim submission and electronic payments in practice management. And as your payments come in, they will show up under this pending EOBs area to be reviewed and then posted into the system. Of course, if you have any insurance carriers that do not participate in electronic payment posting, you can also enter manual insurance payments from here as well. And then you would easily be able to commit or edit any ERAs or EOBs as necessary. And it's possible in just a couple of clicks, you could have an entire ERA posted in the system. And the system will take all of the details of the individual patient's adjudication lines and post them to each one of the patient's accounts. And then you'd be able, you know, obviously to run a report at the end of the day, noting all of the information that you have posted. You can also view and manage patient payments from bookkeeping. You can see patient accounts receivable and the details of your accounts receivable for the patients. So balance, detail, aging. And we also allow for end of day closings. So if you do a hard close at the end of each day, you can do that in practice management and get a closing report that would show what your AR was before the start of your day, all the transactions that took place throughout the day, and what your resulting AR is at the end of the day once you did your closing. Billing. This is where the biller will actually batch, validate, and transmit charges to the clearinghouse for further processing. So charges can be entered in practice management two different ways. We have electronic charges and manual charges. So electronic charges take place when the provider signs off in amazing charts for a patient. During their sign-off, they're going to have the ability to do some basic coding of the patient's visit. So it becomes maybe a, a, a virtual encounter form, if you will. They'll be able to select the level of the patient's visit and also select any additional CPT codes. And this area listed as quick codes is customizable by practice. They'll be able to review their selections before they click sign off. And the system will automatically take any diagnosis codes from the assessment and attach those diagnoses to the individual CPTs that were selected. And then once the provider clicks sign it, the system will take the details of that patient's encounter and transmit it over to practice management for the biller to review that information prior to submitting the charge. And all of that information is stored right in the individual patient's chart under that section I noted earlier where the patient's data service history is located. So you can see how quickly from when I signed off on that patient's encounter in Amazing Charts, 
that it was transmitted over to practice management. And then my biller could go in and manage the details of the charge because obviously uh, the provider may not have added modifiers if those were needed or referring provider and any additional changes that may need to be made to the patient's charge before billing. Otherwise, in circumstances where your practice does not need the provider to sign off on a patient's encounter, yep. but you need to enter a charge. That could be for uh, miscellaneous circumstances. If you're billing the patient for no-shows or retail services or you receive a medical record request, you also have the ability to enter manual charges in the practice management. And that's done right within the individual patient's chart as well. But regardless, all that information is batched, validated, and transmitted all at once from the billing area of practice management. And of course, uh, if you do have any payers that do not send electronic claims, everything has to go paper, you'd also be able to print any paper claims. You'll also notice in the billing area, this is where you will manage your patient statements. So when it comes time to generate a statement batch, you would do that from here. And I mentioned earlier on in the demo that either you can view and print your own statement batch or you can sign up for an additional service, an electronic, payment, uh, electronic statement where our third-party vendor bill slash will send them on your behalf. So instead of viewing them and print them, you can view them and then transmit them to Bill Flash, and Bill Flash will print and mail them for you. You also get payer acknowledgement reports from here. So any claims that were successfully forwarded to the payer, the payer will send those acknowledgement reports back into PM for you to review. So I want to just briefly jump over to Claim Remedy so that you can see once claims are actually transmitted from practice management, where you'd be able to go in and actually view the batch that was transmitted and see the status of the claims in that batch. So I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to share my claim remedy portal and Adam did mention at the beginning of today that all of our practices get direct access to our claim remedy portal so any billers or users that would need to go in and look at certain information pertaining to your claims that were submitted through the portal they would be able to do that So here I am in the Claim Remedy portal. So my screen should change in just a second. I think it's just frozen a little bit. Here we go. So here, you'll be able to see when you launch into our portal 
all of your batches that have been forwarded. You'd be able to see the status of those batch, how many claims were in the batch, and how many were forwarded to the payer. If there were certain claims within the batch that were not forwarded to the payer, they would show up in the error column for the biller to review, correct, and resubmit. And you can launch into the portal within minutes of submitting your claim batch out of practice management and see the status of your batch. You don't have to wait a certain amount of time. Like other systems, you have to wait you know, maybe 24 hours or really until uh, the claim, um, the portal or the clearinghouse sends you back a report indicating claim status. You can also follow the life of the claim in the portal. So you can see for an individual claim whether it was paid or denied, whether it was accepted by the payer, rejected. And if you're looking for the status for a particular patient, you'll notice that there are filter options at the top here. So I could sort information and also look for a particular patient or look at something for a, by a particular payer. And then returning back to practice management over on the left, we have the reporting link. So this is where all the practice management reports are located. And all of them are listed by report type. And depending on the type of report you run, each report has its own set of filter options to help you custom the, customize the report. All of our reports can be saved in practice management for up to three months. And any time that you run a report in practice management, you do have uh, the ability to save it and view it at any time so that if you like filter options that you've used for that particular report, the next time that you view the report, the filter options are up at the top for your convenience. Typically, if you cannot find the report you're looking for in practice management, our clearinghouse also has reports that you can run. So you can see, in addition to all of the different reports available in practice management, there are about 30 more reports available right in Claim Remedy. And then the last link is the administration link, and this is where the customization and setup takes place for your practice in Amazing Charts Practice Management. And this would all be reviewed by your practice management implementation specialist and trainer during your onboarding process. A lot of these um, areas of the administration are pre-populated for you, but you are able to customize them based on your practice's needs. So for example, you can customize the different payment types you accept in your practice, or maybe your scheduler. Your schedule is built and maintained from the administration. When you want the electronic eligibility to run for your practice, you can choose whether you want that to be two days in advance, one day in advance and so forth. So that is the demonstration for today. 
I'm going to open up the floor for questions at this time. And I have put up the slide that if any of you are interested in getting a more deep dive demo or a personalized demo of Amazing Charts Practice Management, please don't hesitate to contact sales at their telephone number, or if it's more convenient, you can email them. And they will uh, put you in touch with our demo specialist, Peter O'Driscoll, to schedule a demo. So at this time, I do not see any questions. So if anyone does have questions, please don't hesitate to send those through the chat area of the participant panel. If there are no questions, you will all get a copy of today's presentation within the next few days so that you can view it again, or if there were certain um, staff members that were unable to join today, they'll be able to watch it at their convenience. So a few questions that actually just came through. How do you change the colors? So if you are referring to the customization that you do for the schedule, all of that is maintained in the administration area of the product. So there is an area in the administration where you can customize the color coding for your schedule. And then as you change the different statuses of your patient's appointments, the colors will update accordingly to however you set them up in admin. Someone had a question on payment posting. Do they do line item posting? Just one payment post to the whole claim. If you are referring to the electronic ERAs, when you post the ERA, it will commit all of the line items on that ERA at once. So if you have 10 patients on the ERA, it will post all 10 line items. If you have 30 line items on the ERA, it will post all 30 at once. If that wasn't your question, please um, you know, maybe just clarify a little bit further what you're asking, and I can answer that, but I think that might be what you're asking there. Do you offer a reduced cost for part-time providers? Um, that would be a question for sales. And uh, Adam did have to jump off today's presentation um, for another meeting. Um, I want to say we do offer a reduced cost, but that would be something that you would want to discuss with our sales team. So again, you know, please don't hesitate to contact our sales via phone or email with any you know, further questions you have regarding uh, whether it be the, the pricing or just the overall implementation of ACPM, and we can get those answered for you. So someone just asked about uh, the webinar, getting a copy of it. Yes, you're going to get the full recorded version of this webinar. So not just everything that I've uh, showed you via the PowerPoint slide today. It'll also be the entire demo. Great. So I don't see any other questions. So I do appreciate everyone's time and attendance today. I hope everyone enjoyed the webinar.
And just keep an eye out for the recorded version uh, within the next couple of days. That will be provided to you by our marketing department. So I hope everyone enjoys the rest of their day. And I hope to possibly work with some, with you, some of you in the future. Take care now. I'm going to go ahead and close the call because uh, I do not see any other questions that have come through. So thanks again.